This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we're glad in it. If you're glad to be alive, would you give God praise tonight? Come on, are you glad that you could bathe yourself and dress yourself, drive yourself, feed yourself? I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's mighty nice to be on the Lord's side. Uh, no other place I would rather be for if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I said I wasn't gonna tell nobody, but I just can't keep it to myself because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank him for saving me. Uh, it is a, an honor and a privilege uh, to be in this sacred space on such an amazing hallowed occasion. I want to take a point of personal privilege just to express my undying gratitude and fond affection uh, for your amazing pastor, uh, for the gift that he is to the body of Christ, the body of Christ and to the world at large. Many preachers will come and stand behind this desk and uh, claim to be your pastor's brother. I am not your pastor's brother. I'm your pastor's brother-in-law. I, I, I like him, but I love your first lady. That's my girl. Help me thank God for our first lady. What an amazing, uh, sweet, and uh, a kind uh, spirit. And I'm just appreciative how she makes my friend happy. Come on, let's thank God for Lady Morgan and for the Morgan family. In the 1950s, the Negroes moved out of the South and made uh, the westward migration uh, looking for jobs in the North, going to Detroit and to Chicago and to New York and to Philadelphia. And then uh, in the 21st century, Negroes moved back to the South and uh, told them Morgan and Jamal Bryant led the parade trying to get out of the snow. So thank you all. Uh, for just uh, accepting two runaway slaves back down to the south. Uh, we are just uh, so grateful for Emancipation Proclamation to declare free at last, free at last. Uh, thank God Almighty. Many uh, years ago, uh, your pastor and I uh, ran into uh, each other in an airport in Norfolk, Virginia. And uh, we just uh, were talking about our plight in ministry and our four steps uh, of destiny having no idea uh, that within 36 months God was going to move both of us uh, and move us to the exact same state and so I, I felt all the better because I moved to a church where I had absolutely no alliances, no relationships, no friendships uh, but an hour and 50 minutes away I had a brother uh, named Tolan Morgan and I am just thankful for him and thankful uh, for his life and uh, for uh, his life. Happy birthday to you. And uh, if I was Stevie Wonder, I could sing, but I can't. So just, just take that. Happy birthday to you. Uh, if you have your Bibles, would you go with me to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1? Would you mind standing for the reading of God's word? I preached last night in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. I got a call around uh, almost midnight uh, from uh, a gentleman by the name of Philip Pointer. And uh, he called me last night and uh, said, hey, Jamal, what you doing? I said, I just got back to my hotel in New Orleans. He said, what you doing tomorrow? I said, uh, I'm going to uh, Warner Robins. He said, nobody has called you yet? I said, no, nobody has called me. He said, I was there tonight. There's nothing left. Just stay in New Orleans. But I'm, I'm just grateful. <laughs> Biggie, give me one more chance. Thank you for just uh, looking beyond my faults. 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1, uh, verse number 8. 
Amen. I'm uh, glad to have a uh, prized daughter of new birth and a daughter of this area. Uh, our minister of music is with us on the night, Sister Tiffany Boone. Thank you so much for coming to support your pastor tonight. First Samuel chapter 1, verse number 8. Her husband, Elkanah, said to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why won't you eat anything? Why are you depressed? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? You may be seated. And Elkanah and her husband came to her and said, Why are you depressed? Why won't you eat anything? Why are you crying? Am I worth more to you than ten sons? First lady, I want to preach tonight using as a subject when love is not enough. When love is not enough. It's a difficult sermon to preach the week after Valentine's Day when social media has... Um, bastardized what authentic relationships are supposed to look like. It's amazing that uh, we only see matching pajamas on Christmas. It's, uh, it's eerie that on Valentine's Day you find out some people were in a relationship when all along you assumed they were by themselves. If you'll do an autopsy on 1 Samuel chapter 1, you will notice that there are some ironies that are not contradictions. In the philosophical sense, to be ironic is the act of thinking differently about what may seem obvious to some. Your homework tonight is uh, to read 1 Samuel chapter 1 in its entirety. But I want you to know from the Cliff Notes edition that Elkanon loved Hannah. This is fellowship, um, not uh, the Hallmark Lifetime Channel love story. This is a real one. This is not the bitter story of an unloved woman who was looking for it in all the wrong places. Truth be told, Hannah had real love. Elkanon didn't just tell Hannah he loved her. He showed his love for her. Hope I can talk to you in plain ghetto speak. Elkanon paid her bills. The Bible says that he gave her a double portion. Hannah, by all indications, is a good man. And contrary to what most of you may think, there are still some good men in the world. You ought to clap if you sit near one right now. There are still some good men in the world, and if you believe that all men are dogs, it may be because you are a dog whisperer. I know that um, it may seem impossible to some of you, but it is possible to still have a solid relationship in an uncertain world. I want to make sure that tonight I dis demystify the cloud of your Walt Disney interpretation of what a relationship is supposed to look like. It may not be perfect, but it can still be good. Don't let the idea of perfection become the enemy of what is good. When you look at Elkanon, you see a good relationship, and what made it good was the fact that here are two people who loved each other for who they were. Elkanon knew Hannah couldn't give him any children 
but he didn't reduce her down to what she couldn't do. You've got to understand in the misogynistic time of the text, a woman's value was not verified unless she could birth children. But he realized that in spite of her inability to produce, she was still a possessor of quality. A lot of you have, in fact, shifted the margin of somebody's value by what they don't have without looking at the merits of who they really are. Your car doesn't make you, your house doesn't make you, your job doesn't make you, your degrees do not make you, but at some point your character has to count. And there are a lot of people who underestimated you because they could only see you through a myopic prism and didn't realize it was not the full spectrum of the totality of your existence. He loved who she was, hear this, even when she couldn't produce. Elkahan had a different kind of love because we've got an example of even when Jesus walked up on the fig tree and said, I'm only going to give you one year. And if you don't do that, then maybe it needs to be cut down. But isn't it amazing that Elkanon gave no time limit for her production? Some of us ought to be grateful unto God for the elongated grace of God because it wasn't just one month, it wasn't just one season, it just wasn't one year, uh, but you've gone through chapters of your life where you were not productive, but God still loved you anyway. And I, I know you sitting up here pumped up as if you have never had an unproductive year, but I need five of you that can be honest to say, God loved me when I can't even give an account for the years I was supposed to produce. Elkanon didn't just love her, he loved her anyway. Isn't that your testimony about God? Is that God loves you anyway? I wish I had somebody in here that can keep it 100. He loves me anyway. I, I never finished school, but he loves me anyway. Got two failed marriages, but he loves me anyway. Y'all not saying nothing. I love God, but when I'm angry, I might slip up and cuss sometimes. He loves me anyway. I don't tithe as much as I should, but every other week I got an Amazon box being dropped off at my door. He loves me me anyway it takes a real man it takes a real woman to love you anyway and that's why you ought to be celebrating God tonight my homiletic mentor Bishop Noel Jones said that people will condemn you on speculation when God loves you with the evidence you ought to thank God. Here it is. Folk will hate you for what they think they know about you when God knows everything about you and still blesses you. Here's your word anyway. Anybody got that kind of favor and relationship with God? He did it anyway. God loved you anyway with all of your faults with all of your mistakes, with all of your trauma, with all of your scars, with all of your vulnerability, he still loves you anyway. And Elkanah asks of his wife a critical question that it behooves me to echo tonight. He asks of his wife, don't you love me more than 10 sons? Elkanah was a good man and his question was sincere. He asked, am I not worth more than 10 sons? Here it is, when children was the litmus test for worth, for value. It's one of the greatest questions ever asked of the Bible. Am I not worth more than 10 sons? Elkanah wanted to be her everything. Wanted to be her sun, wanted to be her moon, wanted to be her stars. But the story teaches us that everything means nothing, hear this, if you are not satisfied with yourself. 
It's getting ready to get quiet right through here. You'll notice this, that Elkanah never beat her, never neglected her, ne never neglected her, never withheld affection from her, never was sparse in spending quality time. But here it is, she is distressed and distraught and depressed, and he thought he had what it took to fix it. And the problem wasn't him. The problem was inside of her. I'm trying to figure out how you can fix your mouth to ask God to bless you when you curse yourself. William Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. When you don't love yourself, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. You will never find that satisfaction. You can buy five bundles of hair. You can go get Vietnamese fingernails. You can fly down to Florida and get a surgery. You can get eyelashes from here to the door. You can win a million dollar jackpot. You can be driving in a Mercedes Benz. You can be living in a gated house. You can have a 10 carat ring. But if you don't love yourself, none of it will mean anything to you or for you. And that's why people can't can't stand you if they don't understand in spite of what you don't have you still love who you are and I got some witnesses in this room I put on some weight in the pandemic but I still love me I don't like getting out the bed all the time but I still love me I hate my job but I still love me my kids get on my nerves but I still love me Hannah had all the love any woman could ask for, but there was still something missing. Even with the love of a good man, she's still longing for something deeper. Elkanon could give her money, could give her affection, could give her security, but it still wasn't enough. You don't even realize what it means to be in a place of permanent dissatisfaction. How are you unhappy with what you prayed for? How are you discontent when you thought this was the finish line? How are you having to fight off the jealousy from stuff people don't know you are sick of having? How are you trying to find some level of peace when there are people who would die to be in your shoes when they don't know you'd rather be in flip-flops? Hannah has no children. So there was something missing. You didn't hear about Hannah being a nice person. You didn't hear about her being polite. You didn't hear about her volunteering at the COVID testing or giving out food. The only thing you hear about Hannah is she has no children. And the desire that is on the inside of her is understanding that it is a metaphor that symbolizes greater than a child. It was a metaphor for complete emptiness. She was miserable and discombobulated because she wanted to have the feeling of knowing what it's like to have something on the inside. Having no child for her meant she had no future, had no legacy, had no value. There was a part of her that was dead. And I need you to hear this. Her womb was dead and Elkanon couldn't perform CPR. What happens when the person you love can't meet the need? What happens when they are sincere and insufficient? God, I can't hear. This ain't no turn to your neighbor sermon. Just look straight ahead. What, what, what happens when they mean well, but even their encouragement is bothersome? She, she is feeling a place of emptiness and she wants to birth something. And I came tonight thinking that I was coming 
to the ship having no idea I made the wrong turn and have ended up in the maternity ward that there are some people under the sound of my voice tonight who are getting ready to birth something that there is something inside of you that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. They, they don't even understand that you are not turned on or impressed by material capitalistic gain, but you want to leave something for generations yet unborn. There is a hankering in your spirit that keeps you up at night trying to feel like how can I shift and make a difference. You don't come to this season of your life that you don't need another bag you don't need another pair of shoes you need something so your unborn great grandchildren will know that there was somebody in Warner Robins Georgia that stopped the earth from moving in the middle of a Ukraine invasion and said here my Lord send me I know some of y'all can't shout about it but those of you that believe your best years are in front of you would you give God glory for what you haven't birthed yet? Hey. If I was promising you to be debt free, y'all be shout louder than that. If I told you money was coming, you be shout louder than that. But if I am telling you, you are about to be a history maker and a world changer and a curse breaker, you ought to be opening your mouth for what's inside of you. <laughs> Hannah. Having a man wasn't enough. Being married wasn't enough. Having a house wasn't enough. Having a car wasn't enough. She was saying, let something come out of me. I need something to come out of me. I don't need a job. I need a career. I need something to come out of me. Because I was born to do better than my mother. Something got to come out of me. I'm going to live in houses my grandmother would have been honored to clean up. I got something that's going to come out of me. I got to drive cars my uncle would have bragged about washing. Something's got to come out of me. I'm getting ready to go to nations that my siblings cannot pronounce. Something has got to come out of me. I need something to come out of me that is going to shift the whole legacy of my last name. God, I can't hear nobody in here that I am going to redefine what my family looks like because of what I produced in the middle of a pandemic. The reality is 800,000 people have died, but God kept you alive for a reason. And the reason why he kept you alive is because there's something inside of you that's got to come out of you. I know you used to shout for material stuff, but would you shout for your idea? Would you shout for your plan? Would you shout for your concept? Would you shout for your business? Would you shout for your nonprofit? God, if you'll ever get this off the ground, I'll shift everything. It has got to come out of you. Karl Marx said that you've got to be careful that you don't allow Christianity to be the opiate of oppressed people. That you come to church just to get a high. So you come in here for the transformation revival, you shout and then you go back home and you still can't sleep. You eating and you ain't even hungry. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You're shopping because you're bored. Why? Because there's a fulfillment that has not been tapped into yet. Would you look at the person beside you and tell them God had me sit next to you tonight? Come on, look at him and tell him God had me sit next to you tonight because you will not be barren another day. Everything you were born to do has got to be birthed this year. Before this year is over, every dream, every idea, every concept, every book, every degree, 
victory has got to come out of you. Um, it is, um, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you lost, you didn't need. God, I better say that to somebody in here. What's wrong with y'all, Warner Robbins? I said, whatever you lost, you didn't need. As a matter of fact, tell the devil, don't bring it back. You keep all of it because I can make it with what's left over. Um, says, um, why are you depressed? Why are you crying? Why are you not eating? I need to know how it is you can claim to be in love with me but not in tune to my feelings. God, I can't hear nobody in here. And there is a pervasive spirit of depression that has fallen on the body of Christ. Pastor Morgan, I got to tell you this, for the very first time in American history, our suicide rate is now led by seniors and not teenagers. Y'all ain't saying nothing uh, because seniors feel like there is no reason to live. Uh, but this joy that you have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. There's getting ready to be a sound in this church tonight because we bind the spirit of depression. We bind the spirit of anxiety. We bind the spirit of stress. I need you to open up your mouth if you believe this is going to be the happiest year of my life. This is going to be the year I say I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Be seated please. Says why why are you this way? Hallelujah. I feel glory coming now. Be seated, please. I feel glory coming right through here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. I said, I break the spirit of depression. Hallelujah. I said, I break the spirit of depression. Pastor Tolan told me to be at home. I might as well be at home there. I said, I break the spirit of depression. If you're in this room and you've been fighting through depression over the last couple of months, do me a favor. I don't care what other people say. I don't care how they look at you. But if you've been dealing with a heaviness, I need you real quick. Would you just come touch this altar? Wherever it is that you are, I break the spirit of depression. I don't know how long you've been feeling this way. I don't know what's been on your back. But by the blood of Jesus, I break the spirit of depression. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace is upon his shoulder. I break. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. I need you to open up your mouth if the weight is coming off of you. I said open up your mouth if the weight is breaking off of you. Open up your mouth if the weight. Say something. Say right there in strings for me. Says why are you depressed? Why is it that you're not eating? How come you don't feel like yourself? My sister, my biological sister, Dr. Tamer Bryant Davis, she's a clinical psychologist at Pepperdine University. Dr. Morgan, she told me something that messed me up. She said 92% of our stress, 92% of our stress is not ours. 92% of our stress is not ours. We stressed about somebody else. Y'all ain't saying that. You stressed about your daughter. You stressed about your mom. You stressed about your son. God said, if you give me glory, I am freeing you from obligation. This 
battle is not yours. This battle is mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. There's nothing wrong with Elkanon. The problem is in Hannah that she's dissatisfied. And it got nothing to do with the marriage. Got nothing to do with who she's with. It is um, a deep and abiding gnawing hunger that there's got to be more for my life than what I have right now. There's got to be something for me that I realize Elkanon cannot fix. Only God can fix this. God, I can't hear nobody. You forgot, maybe you forgot that God is a jealous lover. Hallelujah. And he gets upset when you put anybody in front of him. You spend so much energy trying to get other people's attention that God said, when you going to talk to me? When, when you going to lean on me? When are you going to depend on me? She didn't even understand that what she was going through was a stage for God to come in. I know some of y'all can only shout when you want a job or when you want a man, but there are five of y'all that are saying, I need more of God. And if that's where you are, would you lift up your hands? and open up your mouth like I need more of him hey I need you to open up your mouth behind that mask hey 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 I said open up your mouth he is the air I breathe in him I live in him I move in him I have my very being come on church open up your mouth more of you God only God can fix that empty place only God can tap in to what it is that you so desperately need but heretofore did not know how to articulate. Many of you should have worn black tonight to revival because tonight we mourn the death of your empty womb. Tonight, whatever area of your life has not been productive, God is getting ready to shift it in the spirit realm. We need to free people tonight who believe that because you've been barren, you're going to stay barren. But God says, you don't know what it is that I'm able to do. Have you not known? Have you not heard? I, the Lord your God, am absolutely able. He had to prove to Elkanon that God has the power to bring a dead womb back to life. This is so important. Because many of you have been mad with who you are with as if they created the womb. When something goes wrong with the car, you send it to the manufacturer, not to the gas station. Oh God, help me in here. And you have put too much responsibility on your husband, on your wife, on your significant other to make you happy. You should come happy. God, I can't hear nobody. And when you come happy, whoever you are with should just bring the confetti. You may be seated. I am, um, Elkanon is frustrated because he doesn't know what to do to make it right. He doesn't know what to do in order to fix it. Anybody in this room ever been to a place in your own relationship, whatever you do, don't raise your hand. I already told you this is not a turn to your neighbor sermon. Just look straight ahead. You've not been at a place in your own relationship where you weren't sure how to fix it. What was necessary, what was needed. 
Blink at me twice if you know you it's already checked out. <laughs> that you had already charted out an emergency exit. What you were going to do, how you were going to explain it to the family. How you were discreetly going to delete pictures off your Instagram. Come on. <laughs> you was keeping money aside in a sock drawer. Come on, y'all. The Bible says that Hannah is weeping and crying and there's nothing that Elkanon can do. There is nothing Elkanon can do. There is nothing that Elkanon can do until she gets the directive. Here it is. And Hannah rose. And Hannah rose. Rose. This is so crazy, y'all. Watch this. Because rising is not the birthing position. Oh, God, I can't hear nobody in here. I I anybody who's supposed to give birth, they're not supposed to stand up. Oh, God, I can't hear nobody. But God says, I'm getting ready to shift your position. So when it is that people see you, they won't even expect what it is that you are carrying. I'm begging you, please, whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, if you do not want to produce, if you do not want to produce, the best thing for you to do is to remain seated. But the Bible says when Hannah rose, something rose up inside of her. That's why I can't come to church with my arms folded and my legs crossed. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. If you're going to stand up, you got to speak up because Hannah had to rise. And I am, uh, I'm left with a question tonight. I'm left with a question tonight. Be seated. Um, um, your, 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 um, your pastor applies to me tough love. I, I got to stay right in this text. I'm going to stay right here, Reb. I'm going to stay right here. So you ain't got to talk to me in the office. I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> Y'all thought I didn't know this man. I know this man. The question that I've got to ask you um, that really has not been uh, asked appropriately or adequately or sufficiently, the question I've got to ask you is who loved Hannah more? God help me. It's getting ready to bother you. Who loves Hannah more? And many of you will think uh, Elkanah loves her. And those of you who graduated from vacation Bible school, you will assume. <laughs> you, <laughs> you're going to assume that I'm going to tell you that God loves her more. No. What I'm going to argue, submit, and posit tonight is um, who loves Hannah more than Elkanon is Penina. God help me. Uh, Penina loves uh, Hannah more than Elkanah. Pastor, what do you mean by that? Because Penina provoked her when Elkanah just consoled her. But Penina loves her more. Watch this. Penina made Hannah so uncomfortable with where she was in her life it made her want to produce some of y'all don't know what real love is see you've got to understand that hate is not the opposite of love did you hear what I just said I said hate is not the opposite of love let me give it to you one last time hate is not the opposite of love hate is what happens when love is lazy God help me. Penina, I'm waiting for y'all to come on in here. Penina did not hate Hannah. She hated that she loved her.
God help me. See, your haters really don't hate you. They just hate how much they love you. They hate that they want to be happy for you for everything that God has done in your life. Every now and again, you got to thank God for the folk that set the traps because they didn't know there was a trampoline at the bottom of the trap and that you were going to jump out higher because you needed the hateration. Elkanon did not push her to have children. Penina did. God help me. I want to thank God publicly for every person that perpetuated a rumor about you. I want to thank God for every person that sent a text message they knew wasn't true. I want to thank God for those that scandalized your name and left you for dead. I came to tell all of them no good tonight you Negroes you meant it for evil but this year God is going to work it out for my good. Pushed her, pushed her to produce. You got to thank God for the people who tried to block your capacity and tried to put a limit on what they thought you were going to be able to do. But they had no idea that delay is not denial that Hannah had to produce. I can't hear nobody. I said Hannah had to produce because it is what philosophers call consensual consensualism, which means that it's got to be the good after the evil. They didn't even understand the barrenness was a part of the plan because had she not produced, then we would have never come through the line of Jesus. Every time there is a delay, it just means God is working on something better because he always saves the best for last would you look at your neighbor and tell him it's birthing time whatever is in you has got to come out of you whatever it is that God planted in you has got to come out God knows I am not a gynecologist I have never been an OBGYN but I do know how to deliver and whenever it is that you gotta deliver you only gotta whisper one word and that one word is push I need you to look at your neighbor and tell them tonight we push everything that's in you has gotta come out of you push praise until something happens push greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world be seated please and this is the last time be seated please I'm, please I'm begging you hallelujah I need you to be seated huh I've only been Baptist three years. I'm trying to figure it out. Be seated. Please. Yesterday, something crazy happened yesterday. God help me. Something crazy happened yesterday. Everybody yesterday was talking about two, 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 two. God help me. That's so what everybody was talking about yesterday. It was a two, 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 two. God help me. Yeah. Yeah. It's two, two, uh, two, two. They, they, they said, that's what you're going to get. It was um, two, 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 two. And I, and I kept hearing uh, Pastor Morgan in the back of my head uh, saying, that ain't in the text. Uh, I couldn't find two nowhere in the text. But Elkanon asked her the question. I closed where it is that I started. Am I not more, not than two, but ten sons? God help me. I, 
Maybe we got a different kind of God in Stonecrest than y'all got in Warner Robins. But the God I serve up in Atlanta, you know what he does? He does exceedingly. God, I can't hear nobody. Abundantly. Beyond what you can think, what you can dream, or what you can imagine. Do you know why you getting ready to shout tonight? You getting ready to shout because this year you going to get ten times what you didn't have last year. I need you to open up your mouth like you know that God is getting ready to make a way out of no way. Would you bless him like my God is awesome. Whatever I didn't have is coming back to me. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 fold. This is um, this is the last time I'm gonna ask you to be seated. It's the last time I'm gonna ask you to be seated, and uh, then I'm not responsible after this. Um, be seated, please. Um, y'all got a spirit of disobedience. Be seated. Yes. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't have a pastor for two years. Y'all be seated. I need you to lift that hand for me. I got to speak something over your life. Hallelujah. Let me hear you. I want you to lift that hand. I tell the members of New Birth, lift your hand as high as you see yourself going. Hallelujah. I speak over every lifted hand that tonight ends your barren season. God, I can't hear no worshipers. Everything you were born to produce, you will not die until it comes to pass I wonder if y'all will shout over this everything you don't receive your children will get it I speak over every lifted hand your grandchildren will never know lack they'll never know insufficiency they'll never know what it means to be alone or to be depressed that they will have a love that is enough Speak of every lifted hand that this one year will make up for the last three. God, I thought I was going to have a better shout than that. I said this one year is going to make up for the last three years of your life. And those of you who are excited about your productive season, would you open up your mouth Come on, I can't hear you. I said open up your mouth. This is your productive season. Come on, I can't hear you. I dare to cry out loud. This is your productive season. I need you to open up your mouth for healed marriages. Open up your mouth for healed families. Open up your mouth for heal relationship. I need something that will mean something. I declare and decree of every lifted hand that whatever areas you have that are unaddressed, God is going to meet and exceed them before Easter gets here. And those of you who have that kind of faith, would you open up your mouth and give God your best shout of expectation? Come on, I can't hear you. I said open up your mouth. I can't hear you. Open up your mouth. It's your best season. It's your best season. This is your best season. This is the season he kept you alive for. This is the season he sustained you for. This is the season you've been waiting for. This is the season you prayed about. This is the season that eyes have not seen. This is the season that is Walk into your season. 
Walk into your season. Walk into your season. Now clap your hand. Hey. I say clap your hand. I say clap your hand. Come on, come on, come on. I'm excited about your future. I'm excited about your family. I'm excited about your legacy. I'm excited about your real estate. I'm excited about your contract. I'm excited about your health improvement. Look at your neighbor and tell them congratulations. You just entered the most productive season of your life. Congratulations. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many of you are excited about your next season? How many of you feel confident because you have the love of God? How many, I know this is a strange question, but I hope you'll go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. How many of you actually love yourselves? Flaws and all, I still love myself. I'm gonna stretch tonight. Softly musicians, I'm gonna stretch tonight the elasticity of your faith. Consider the dean of uh, black preaching, Dr. Gardner Taylor often would say that uh, preaching is incomplete without a practicum. That we can't just be hearers of the word, but we have to be doers also. How many of you believe by way of hand that you're going to produce something big this year? I'm believing that for you. I am uh, just coming up on uh, three years at New Birth and uh, Black Friday, we did something absolutely astounding. On Black Friday, we opened uh, the new Black Wall Street Market, the very first mall in America owned by black people. New Black Wall Street Market, next time you're in Atlanta, I wanna invite you to please come. We've got 100 black businesses under one roof. 100. We took past an old Sam's Club and revamped it. And uh, it is absolutely 21st century state of the art. We've not had uh, that level of uh, committed economy uh, since Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, over 100 years ago. And uh, so to see that come up full circle uh, really is a dream come true. God convicted me uh, several years ago because I have an anointing for entrepreneurship. How God convicted me uh, several years ago and said, uh, Jamal, you are out of order if in church you only talk about money when it's time to get the tithe. So you can't ask people for the 10% and not show them how to multiply the 90. Oh, y'all not saying nothing to me. Because without that, we are just raising welfare worshipers. We're shouting, hoping somebody's going to give it to us and not that we have the resources to do it ourselves. It's very interesting, Pastor Morgan, that when Jesus called the 12 disciples, he didn't call any of them from seminary. And I believe in higher education. I went to Morehouse, went to Duke, went to Oxford. I believe in higher education. Hear this. But Jesus didn't call any of them, here it is, from Bible college. I want to go a step further. Some of y'all are not going to like it. He called all 12 from business. Because Jesus was of the mind that if you can't do business, you're not fit for ministry. And a lot of black churches are tanking. A lot of black churches are falling apart because we put people in leadership because of perfect attendance. And not because of competency. Just because you can pray don't mean you should be a trustee. 
Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Might I go further to say three-fourths of the disciples had more education than Jesus. But he was secure enough to surround himself with competent people. I'm going to take you a step further. When he called them, notice where he called them. He didn't call any of them at church. He didn't call any of them at the revival. He didn't meet any of them at holy convocation. He called them from their job. But the interesting thing, friends, is none of them shut their businesses down. The evidence is after the crucifixion, they said, let's go back to the office. Can you imagine God so blessing your business that you don't even have to work it for three years? God, I can't hear nobody. Can you imagine your business functioning at such a level you ain't even got to show up? They're just doing automatic deposits. Because God wants to bless you so that your business is not just for self-attainment. It is for kingdom advancement. And so many of us have forgotten Here it is that uh, the generation before ours, when we found a success, we would ascribe this title to them. They are a credit to the race because it was not just their individual success. It was the community's success. And when we lost that and adopted individualistic aspirations, we lost our sense of community. I want us to be a blessing on this, the anniversary of this amazing ministry. This is the anniversary of this amazing ministry. I want to press right now very quickly. Uh, I want to press uh, 12 of you because that's how many God raised up. I'm going to raise 12 of you. If tonight, um, Pastor Morgan, uh, I was starting a Kojic church, if I was starting a church in the Church of God in Christ, I would need 50 people. They got to sign a sheet of paper. We send it to Memphis, and they send us back our credentials, make us official. In order for you to join or to start a synagogue, you don't need 50, you need 12. But the catch is, all 12 have to have independent wealth. I think I lost you. Can I say something to you? And Pastor Morgan, when I found this out, it upset me, it bothered me, it unnerved me. No synagogue, not one synagogue in America has a mortgage. Did y'all hear what I just said? You ain't never bought no souvenir journal ad for no Jewish banquet. (laughs) You ain't never seen no thermometer outside their building. You ain't bought no Katie Dids from no little Jewish kid. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Why? Because they understand the value of business. Pastor in the Jewish synagogue, it is out of order for the rabbi to raise the offering. The rabbi does not raise the offering because they don't want his word to be compromised. God, y'all don't like this here. I got to tell you this. I got to give you this. I need you to have this because they understand that the rabbi will never dream in budget. Did y'all hear what I just said? The rabbi will never dream in budget. If you have a dream and you can afford it, it's not from God. When God gives you the idea, he does not check your finance, he checks your faith. And if you have faith, he'll come up with the finance. The 12 of you, listen to me very carefully. The 12 of you, I want you to stand in agreement with me. 12 of you who are online, I want you to do so in likewise and similar fashion. 12 of you who I am believing God is going to use to exponentially bless this ministry. Can you imagine what Pastor Morgan would be able to accomplish? Here's the catch. If budget wasn't an issue. If whatever he dreamed, he was able to pursue what would happen to this city what would happen to this region 12 of you very quickly 12 of you online I need you to do the same 12 of you I want you to get a seed of $200 12 of you I want you to get a seed of $200 whether you're writing it out by check you're writing it to this church this is not for me we having a birthday party for your church 
Here's what I need you to do. All of our giving options are on the screen for those of you who are streaming online. But 12 of you who are standing in agreement saying, Pastor, I want to be one of those 12 businesses that God blesses in this area. 12 of those whose idea God expands. The 12 of you, I want you to get that seed of 200. As soon as you have it, would you come meet me at this altar very quickly, please? 12 of you, 12 of you, no matter where it is that you are, I need you to move expeditiously. I need 12 of you, if you'll come, I need you to come uh, to this altar. Even if you're giving by your phone, I need you to come and meet me at this altar, please. 12 of you to do it. Thank you so very much. I'm waiting on you. Come on. Thank you. If you'll stand right here, 12 of you, even if you're giving uh, through a mobile app, even if you're giving uh, through text to give, giving online, even if you're going to mail it in later, I need 12 of you to come quickly, please. Thank you. I'm waiting on you. Thank you so very much. If you don't have 200, don't clutch your pearls. I'm not talking to you. Uh, we, we got out of guilt offerings in Leviticus. Thank you. I need you to please come. I'm waiting on you, please. I need an additional 12 of you who are online. I want you to sow this seed, standing in agreement with us that God is going to do something absolutely outlandish. He's going to do something amazing. He's going to do something uncanny. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Come on. Thank, come on. That's 15. Thank you, that's 16, that's 17. I tell you what, let's just go to 20 real quick. That's 18, that's 19. Here comes 20. Thank you so very, that's 21. So let's just go to 25 real quick. Thank you, where's 22? Where's 22? I need you to come very quickly, please. The 22nd person, there you are. Thank you so very much. Would you look at the person beside you and say, are you the one or should we look for another? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. I'm just waiting on three more of you to come. Three more of you to come. What is $200 to a future millionaire? Thank you. That's 23. That's 24. That's 25. That's 26. That's 27. That's 28. Let's just go to 30. That's 29. I'm just waiting on one more. Wherever it is that you are, you holding up the whole service. I'm waiting on that last person to come. Those of you who are online, I need you to come and partner with us. Uh, that one person, do me a favor, please. Warner Robbins, come on ship. When that last person comes, I need you to cheer like there's 30. Thank you so very much. That's 31. That's 32. That's 33. Thank you. You coming? Come on. That's 34. That's 35. All right. That's 30. Let's just go to 40. Y'all playing with it. Come on. There's 37. I'm waiting on uh, three more. Come on. I'm waiting on you. That's 38, that's 39. Y'all, when the 40th comes, would you just cheer like you are excited? Here comes the 40th one. Come on, let's get excited for him. Those of you who are online, I need you to do likewise and in similar fashion. Those of you who are at this altar, lift up your phone, lift up your check. You balling out of control, lift up your money. Come on, lift it up. Repeat after me of this altar. Lord, thank you. Come on, repeat after me. Lord, thank you for what you did last year, for what you did last month, for what you did last week, for what you did yesterday. But the seed in my hand is an expectation for what you're going to do before this year is over. Amen. Bless the Lord. Would you just tap this altar as a point of contact? Come on, ship. Would you give God glory for those 40? Come on, y'all got to do better than that. Clap your hands for them. I said clap your hands for them. Don't hate, celebrate. I want to ask every person, hear me, every person who was not in that 40, every person who was not in that 40, I want you to get an odd offering as close to 100 as you possibly can. Don't listen to Hezekiah Walker, 99 will do. I want you to get your best, get your best offering as close uh, to 99. I just ask that you do an odd offering. You don't have 99, I want you to get 57. You don't have 57, get 35. You don't have 35, give 17. 
you from the hood, put five on it. But I want you to get an offering uh, that ends in an odd number. Ask that you get an offering that ends in an odd number. Why? Because I believe God's going to do something odd in your life. I think he's going to do something strange, something that's going to be absolutely bizarre, something that's going to give you pause. All of our giving apparatuses are still on the screen. Those of you who are online, do not eat and run. It's illegal. You done already had the blessing. Please do not log off now. Netflix will be there. Ozark is not going off. I need you right where it is that you are. It is not equal giving. It is equal sacrifice. It is not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. And so whatever is your best offering, your best odd offering, as close to 100 as you possibly can, would you come quickly and just come touch this altar? Come on, quickly, wherever it is that you are. If you've not given yet, if you've not given yet, come on, it's a new season, it's a new day. Fresh anointing is coming my way. It's a season of power, of prosperity. It's a new season. Here's the good news, y'all. It's already here. Come on, do me a favor, please. As long as somebody is coming, would you keep clapping? Come on, as long as somebody is coming. Would you keep clapping as long as somebody is coming? Come on, y'all clapping like you in a bingo hall. Come on, clap your hands. Everybody is standing. Everybody is standing. Our pastor is coming in just one moment. Everybody is standing. Pastor Morgan, I got the startling statistics, the unnerving data that eight out of 10 people in this room, eight out of 10 people in this room have never won a soul to Christ. Eight out of 10 of you have never prayed with anybody the prayer of salvation. Eight out of ten of you have never invited somebody from your job to church. Tonight we're going to defy the odds. I want you very quickly help me open the doors of the church with your mask on. I want you to help me open the doors of the church. Would you find two people in this room that you don't know? Find two people whose names you don't know. Find two people you don't recognize. Walk right up on them and ask them are they saved. Ask them do they have a church home. Come on, everybody move and talk to somebody. Come on. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. If there's somebody here, it's coming back. It's a season of season of If there's one here, won't you come? And prosperity. It's a new Come on, let's say it again. It's a new season. If you know it, lift your voice. Fresh anointing. It's flowing my way. It's a season of power. And prosperity. It's a new season. Coming from 